Hey everybody, we are ready to start part three of this quilt along with the hallelujah pattern. Let me get a picture so you can see what it looks like. This is so cute and we've gotten to the fun part. We're going to begin to use the brother scan and cut. The very first thing we're going to do, I was having memory chip problems on my part two and I did not get to where we need to trim down those stars. So I'm going to do one of those first before we get going and I'm going to show you how to do that and then once you get done with that, we'll, you can go ahead and get started on this. So I made myself some notes. We're going to cut stars to six and a half. Y'all need to make as many copies of this pattern as you need to, okay? I downloaded the paper pattern, so I just made a bunch and taped them together, all right? You know, if you get, like, I've got this entire thing working perfectly. It fits, everything's taped, everything works, except this music note right here. If that happens to you, don't worry about that, because in, in the end, you're going to be able to move this around, these two pieces around, because you can scan that out all by itself. What you really want to make sure you get as correct and right as possible are those pieces that overlap. Where you see the dotted lines and you have overlapped pieces down here at the feet and up here by the neck. Those are the ones that you need to make sure that you get as close to pattern true as possible. One of the reasons I had asked all brands if I could borrow the Luminaire is because the body of the dog piece number one is right around 14 inches tall and my hoop that I have on my quattro is only nine and a half by 14 so it really won't be able to handle the 14 inch of the body. The largest hoop size on the Luminaire is 16 and it can handle it no problem so that's why I'm using the Luminaire. A lot of you ask me what kind of scan and cut I have. I have the Brother 650 wireless. I don't have the new DX, but um, I'd love to get one. <laughs> hey, Santa. <laughs> On the DX, you do not have to worry about how deep your blade needs to go. The computer figures that out for you and handles it. On the 650, you, you have to be able to do that yourself. You know, and you're going to want to do the test, the little circle test, and make sure you get it right on your fabric. For those pieces that are overlapped on the pattern, they're in dotted lines because they have parts that go behind it or they go behind something, you're going to want to go ahead and trace those out individually onto heat and bond. For the pieces that are not overlapped, like the music notes and the words, you don't need to put those onto heat and bond because we can just scan in those pages. So that saves us a little time. It's only the pieces that have something that overlap, that they overlap something or they are overlapped by something that you're going to want to make a solid piece. The scan and cut needs a solid line in order to be able to create the shape. Brother Scan and Cut makes, the standard mat is a 12 inch mat. From previous quilt projects where I needed a lot of cut pieces, I bought a 24 inch cutting mat, but I don't have a 24 inch scanning mat. So I did a little trick and I cheated and I fooled my scan and cut into thinking that I had a scanning mat. I took a piece of parchment paper and just taped it to the cutting mat and now it's going to think it's a scanning mat. It's pretty cool. And I have also taped on those pieces that I have uh, traced out that are going to either be overlapped or they are overlapping. What I have traced out is piece number one, the body of the dog. I have traced out uh, piece number three, which is a leg, piece number four, which is a leg, piece number five, which is the foot, and piece number six, which is an ear. On the pattern, piece number two is the head, right here, okay? If that were me, I would have made that piece number seven because the nose is behind it and the ears are behind it. When we go to stitch this down with simply applique, that's going to have to go on after the nose and after the ears, so I would not have put it as number seven or number two. I almost would have put it as, I think, maybe number eight. I think seven ought to be the nose um, just because... Uh, 
when when you're doing simply applique you kind of have to think like that you've got to think about how the embroidery machine is going to put things down and then whatever is lowest whatever piece is covered the mo you know as 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 applique layers go your topmost piece will be last your lower piece the lowest piece will be first okay so that's just something to think about when you get in the mind of how you want to layer your pieces in simply applique you just kind of kind of keep that in mind so sometimes it helps when you get these patterns you just want to look at them and you want to study them a little bit and kind of figure out okay how's that going to work there are some applique patterns that you get and it like loops in and out and it goes around and it might be above on one side and below on another that's where you're going to have to pay attention to as the machine comes around you want to stop it and then you know put it under where it needs to go and then start it up again that's a more advanced thing to do so this one's going to be fairly simple I went ahead and trimmed it like I said so that all of this fits on the 24 inch piece of fabric now I hate to break this to you but you're going to make this twice you're going to make a test and then you're going to do the real thing as Deborah Jones says there are those who test and those who wish they did so get yourself a 24 inch piece of uh, scrap fabric and another and it can be it can be identical fabric you can use the same fabric for the backing as you do for all the body parts you just want to be able to do a test because you want to be sure how far in you want to do your your stitching I am not going I'm not going to do a satin I'm going to do a straight edge applique all right so probably the tack down stitch is going to be my final stitch I'm not going to do a blanket stitch on this and I'm not going to do a satin stitch so I'm going to have that tack down moved in not quite it maybe a sixteenth of an inch all the way around and I'm going to figure that out on my test for those of you who do not have the brother luminaire you are going to have to do the body of the dog uh, because it is so tall you're gonna have to do that the old-fashioned way and stitch that down by machine regular domestic sewing machine everything else you should be able to do in the embroidery hoop uh, unless you've got a hoop that goes as large as it needs to be for the scanning of the applique parts if you don't have a 24 inch mat that's not a problem you're just going to have to cut the body of the dog the old-fashioned way as well just like it says in the instructions the 12 inch mat will work for just about everything else as far as I can tell I think it will but the body of the dog is the big piece so okay let's get started and we need to trim down our stars so let's finish up those and then we'll start the fun part and get going on this alright okay we're gonna trim these according to the directions and the directions said to put the four and a half inch line of your ruler on this seam right here and if you can't see the seam that's okay line up the very edge of the star with the four and a half inch mark alright and you want to line up this this edge right here with the two inch mark so that's what we're gonna do and we're gonna cut these straight by making sure I wanna make sure you can you see what I'm doing here this is one, two, three, four and a half. There's that half right there. And it is going. Now, if if it's if it's not exactly on the seam in the middle, don't worry about that. You want it on the you want this on here straight and this on here straight. And then here's the two inch line right there. Okay? And what you do is you trim up one side and try not to shove it like I did. All right, and trim it straight across the top. I probably should use a bigger ruler <laughs> so I don't make it wobble. I'll use my big square so you guys can see a little bit better. All right, so now you can tell this is on the four and a half, and this is on the two right here, and that's fine. And then you flip it over 180 degrees, and we're going to put the four and a half inch line right here on this star and we're gonna put 
the two inch line and get that even with that. All right, that looks good. Remember my cutting techniques where you don't move the ruler, you move everything else away from it first. That's going to make your life a lot easier if you have a little snag where it doesn't fit right. We're at six and a half right here by six and a half up here. That'll work perfect. So you need to do that to all of your stars. We are ready to scan in the parts that we're going to do today. And it doesn't matter on the... I understand on the 650 it doesn't matter which direction the uh, mat goes in but on the DX it does so you all need to pay attention to that I have um, with the parchment paper tape does not like to stick obviously so just kind of press everything down and make sure it works and I need to I'm gonna load my mat first get that in and to scan we're going to tell it scan, scan to cut data, and go. Hopefully this works. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, I like it. I'm going to, I want to capture the outlines of all of these, and so I'm going to go here. What I touched was the outline button. See how it has really highlighted the outline button? There's a lot of stuff on here I don't need. So I'm going to bring this in real close. I'm going to touch the bottom. Uh-oh, look at that. See how this wasn't, I didn't get this right here? I went in too far on the one on top. I'm going to bring this back over a little bit. Make sure I got it all. That looks good. All right. We're going to hit preview, see what we got. That looks pretty good. I'm going to hit save. It's going to ask me where I want to save it. I want to save it in the scan and cut canvas, okay? Because in the canvas, I'm going to go in and clean up anything that needs to be cleaned up. All right, project successful. It's number 95. We'll tell it okay. All right, we'll go back and cancel, sure. And we're going to go home. I need to show you too, I forgot to tell you, if you do have a 24 inch mat, before you get started, you need to go to tools, and right here, cut area, you want to make sure that it says you can do a 12 by 24 or a 12 by 12, alright, I have 12 by 24, either one, you need to do this before you scan, eject, alright, 